Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Invivo, Scrip and The Pink Sheet. I'm here at the Biotech Showcase uh, 2018. We're in San Francisco. It's a meeting that uh, investors and biotech companies and pharmaceutical companies all get to, to meet each other. It runs alongside the uh, now famous uh, JP Morgan healthcare meeting. The meeting, as I say, is, is a great opportunity for people to, to catch up with uh, sort of your colleagues, investors, etc. And I'm joined by Amit Munshi, who's the CEO of Arena Pharmaceuticals. Amit, uh, you know, welcome. It's about 12 months ago since uh, since we last met um, at this meeting. Um, last year, you'd been in the role as CEO of Arena Pharmaceuticals for about six months, and you were just at the start of a, a reboot of, of, of Arena. So 12 months on, yeah, how's it all going? Well, thanks again for having me uh, this year. The it's been a great year for the company, um, really encouraged by the progress we've made. We've got a long road ahead. Um, we started the year really with um, getting the Linux study fully enrolled on the back of a lot of the cleanup work we had to do in 2016. Uh, we reported out the Linipeg um, data in, uh, in the summertime. We had multiple financing events uh, around that time. And we were able to reset the shareholder base of the company, strong institutional support for the, for the business and for the new story going forward. And that's been very, very encouraging to see. Um, probably the most encouraging thing throughout 2017 was our build out of our, our infrastructure as a company. Uh, we had uh, brought the company down to a relatively small size. So, so this was when, because you, you, you had Belvik and you, you obviously had a, uh, a sort of a commitment to that, but you did a, a deal or you, you amended the deal you had with Esai. So could you just you know, recap on that and then we can then see? Sure, absolutely. So that, that was at the back end of uh, 16, early 17. We uh, worked with our partner, ASI Pharmaceuticals. We essentially give them a greater capacity for economic benefit on, on Belvique. Uh, and in exchange, we were able to get off the hook on a substantial amount of, of costs that we have, approximately $100 million of costs that we were on the hook for that we needed to um, relieve ourselves of. So we could refocus the company on the pipeline. And Valinapeg was our first data readout. It proved uh, that our hypothesis was heading in the right direction. Uh, the data was unprecedented. We showed a 20% improvement in pulmonary vascular resistance, or PVR, compared to dual background therapy, and that was unprecedented in PAH patients. Um, so we're very excited about taking that product forward. We think it has the opportunity to really change the landscape in the future of the treatment of PAH. So we're currently working um, through the phase three plans on that product. Uh, later in the year, we completed the atrazumab uh, enrollment for uh, the study in ulcerative colitis, and um, that took a tremendous amount of effort last year. And again, a lot of this uh, behind the scenes was really rebuilding the architecture of the company, making sure we had the right people in the right jobs, making sure we had the right clinical development infrastructure so that we could actually execute on the plan. Right. So, so we look at that so that reboot. So, if we look at where you were January 2017 to where we are now, so. What, how did investors, how did the capital markets respond to the changes that you were implementing? Well, we, look, we're, we're, um, we're really pleased with the support we've had from the institutional investors. We raised about $270 million in institutional capital this year. Uh, the stock's done quite well uh, in the marketplace. We started the year around $350 million market cap, and we ended the year approximately $1.5, $1.6 in market cap. Um, so I think the markets responded well to the new strategy. Like I said, there's a long road ahead. There's a lot of work to be done, but we're encouraged with the progress we've made so far. Um, and again, the, the capstone for the year was a very difficult to enroll the Trazomod clinical program in ulcerative colitis. And we had expected to enroll between 120 and 160 patients, and we enrolled at the high end of that range, about 157 patients. So um, that was also received really well at the back end of the year. Okay, so, so as we look forward to 2018, uh, the LEAD program, you've got the phase two data. You sort of say that you're now look at phase three, are you doing that on your own or are you, have you got a partner in, in place? Yeah, we're, we're not looking to partner our compounds at this point. We're really focused on executing. Um, for Relinapeg, we are working closely with the agencies in the US and Europe to design our phase three program going forward. We're really excited to really provide the market with a, a key update in, in Q1 around, um, around the phase three plans going forward. So you know, really our first major catalyst for the year. Uh, we're also expecting to provide um, a readout on the ulcerative colitis study in Q1 of this year. So that's the second major data catalyst for us, um, starting with Relinopec last year, now the 
uh, Etrazomod also with Colitis study in Q1 of this year. So two major data catalysts, uh, about nine months apart from the company. Um, as we head into the back end of the year, we're going to be heavily focused on thinking about how we expand our pipeline. As you and I spoke about last year, uh, we're fortunate to have compounds that are essentially sitting on a shelf that we think are super exciting, they have tremendous potential, and we'll be taking a look at those compounds and making some rational decisions about which ones to move forward and not move forward. So um, there's a lot of work to be done in the second half of the year. Also in the second half of the year, we're going to start looking at Atrazomod across a broader range of indications. As um, as you know, last year we initiated not only not only did we fully enroll the ulcerative colitis trial, but we initiated trials in PG or pyoderma gangrenosum and a study in PBC or primary ability cholangitis. And so we expect to continue that in terms of the broad clinical utility that Trazomod offers. Right. So, and 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 what's what is the timeline? You sort of say at the back end of twenty. Yeah, we expect to look at that in two thousand. Yeah, the back end of eighteen makes the most sense for us. We we want to get through the data event on the Trazomod in the first part of the year. We'll take a hard look at that data, see what we can learn from there, and that'll help us define our strategy going forward in the second half of eighteen. So, so, so the capital that you raised in, in twenty seventeen. Uh, which was, I guess, ostensibly partly to, to, to finance the reboot of the company. What, how much runway does that actually give you? What, what, what did you tell investors that they can expect to receive for that money? So the way we think about our capital raises as it relates to milestones is that we'd like to raise capital to take a single asset forward. So for example, on Rolinipeg, we turn the data card over, we raise a substantial amount of capital. That capital is sufficient for us to take Rolinipeg forward through the approval. And that's kind of how we've been thinking about it. Uh, if a trazomod should prove to be positive and also with colitis, we would look to raise an additional round of capital at that point. Um, so it's all it's all product dependent. We cheat product needs to sort of stand on its own going forward. So it's really difficult to ascertain exact runway. It all depends on the data events that happen and the strategies that we lay forward and, and how we move the program. So, so, so you sort of said that you're not at, the, at this moment looking to partner out your your, your, your programs. Are you putting together sort of you know, a commercial infrastructure then? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit early for that, but that would be the intention. And let's take uh, uh, Rolinipeg for a moment. Uh, on Rolinipeg, we're starting to think about what our commercial footprint would have to look like. We're starting to think heavily about how we're going to compete in the marketplace. And our phase three program is re really designed not just to uh, drive to approval, but to really create a competitive advantage in the marketplace. So we, we believe that we have a potential best-in-class compound here. It's the first oral prostacyclin or IP receptor agonist that looks like IV prostacyclin. It's got a 24-hour half-life. It has substantial improvements in potency compared to competitive compounds. And when you have a product that has a potential to really change the patient landscape, I think we owe it to the product and we owe it to patients to be bold in our phase three plan. So can you sort of give us some indication of how you'd be able to demonstrate that differentiation? So we laid out four priorities, uh, kind of mid-17, in terms of what we wanted to accomplish. And they were optimizing our time to market. We wanted to make sure we had a broad breadth of label on the program. We wanted to make sure we had broad phys physician experience with the compound. And finally, we wanted to make sure we have some comparative data to the competitive compounds. Um, across those four domains, we anticipate three different clinical programs. Uh, the first program is expected to be somewhere in the area of exercise capacity. And we're going to look at things like six-minute walk or even CPET or cardiopulmonary exercise testing. Um, there's a, a treadmill test that can be used. So we're looking. We haven't specified yet which one of those we're going to do and in what order. But it'd be exercise capacity. The second one will be a time to clinical events. We'll be looking at uh, a longer-term outcomes type analysis. That won't be on the critical path for uh, approval, but it'll allow us to expand the label over time. And third, which we're not going to talk about for competitive reasons, is we expect a standalone program looking at comparative data, looking at our program versus Arenatram from United Therapeutics and Select Effect from J&J. We think we've got a product that's substantially better, and we fully expect uh, to present head-to-head -head data so that to convince uh, clinicians and investors that we've got a best-in-class product. Right. And then you mentioned, right, okay, that you, you have a pipeline and you had assets that were sitting on the shelves that you previously hadn't been able to put any financial firepower behind. Do you actually have enough of a pipeline or a tail to sort of build sustainability in the company or are you looking to bring in you know, new assets or new technologies? Yeah, right now we have no interest in, in licensing. Partly we've got three programs in clinical studies. 
um, even without taking things off the shelf that are existing inside the company, it's fully feasible that we're in multiple phase threes at the back end next year and several phase two trials. So that's a, that's a lot to handle for a company our size. Um, and I want to be prudent in terms of how we utilize our, our, our infrastructure and, and, and therefore our capital. Um, as the right opportunity presents itself and capital is available, we'll be able to pull products off the shelf. We have additional compounds in the cardiopulmonary space, which we think will augment a cardiopulmonary business around the Linnipeg, uh, including one phase two clinical stage program. So we, we're looking forward to making those decisions and sharing that information with the street in the back end of 18. Right, okay. Well, Amit, thanks very much for, for, for stopping by. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll see you again this time next year. We'll see you next year. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.